once we are done creating the domain models the next step is to scaffold our controllers which basically means generating the controllers based on the models so let's go to visual studio let's scaffold the controller so what do i mean by scaffolding the controller scaffolding is nothing but the process of automatically generating the controller based on models okay so basically instead of creating a controller and writing all the action methods by our own what the scaffolding mechanism will do is it will create the controller automatically with all the crud operations with with a method for each crud operation for example a method for create a method for read, a method for update, and a method for delete. Okay. So the controllers will basically use entity framework to communicate with the database layer. Okay. So to get started, what I will do is I will delete the values controller over here, which is of not really any use. And then let me right click onto the controllers folder and say add a new controller the add scaffold dialog box will basically populate the list of options for creating either a MVC controller or a web API controller. Since we are working with web API, we will be creating a web API controller and specifically I want to create a web API controller with actions already within it using the entity framework. So it uses entity framework to automatically generate actions for us. Okay. So let me select add and if I click add, I will get a add controller dialog box and over here, my controller will be generated on top of a model. Okay. So for each kind of controller, for example, home controller, values controller, employee controller, products controller I need a supporting model okay so based on that model I will be having the controller over here so in the model class let me select employee model and in the data context class I do not have any data context class yet so I will click plus and basically select whatever name it suggests and say add okay so just one on the sidelines I have renamed the project and the solution to demo app because it will allow me to avoid confusion between a class name and a namespace name okay so I have made the changes okay and then let me select use async controller actions so this will allow me to create action methods or controller methods which are basically asynchronous so using this if you select this option your methods will be asynchronous or the calls to your database will be asynchronous which means that your user will not be blocked at the front end so the user can say go and retrieve a list of products or a list of employees and the time that it takes to retrieve the data the user can do something else the user is not blocked or in other words the user is performing an asynchronous operation so for the user to perform an asynchronous operation we have to create our methods as asynchronous okay and then give a name for your employees or rather your controller so basically our add controller box dialog box basically it has guessed the controller name based on the model name okay and let me say add I will talk about this data context class in just a bit so what do we mean by a data context class data context class is the class or your controllers your controller methods will use data context classes object to communicate to your database so it is the object that your controller has to talk to your database or to communicate with your database and the data context class also manages entity objects during runtime which basically includes populating objects with data from a database change tracking if some objects have changed in memory those things needs to be tracked and those things are done by your data context class or a DB context class and then persisting data to the database okay so 
that operation basically generated two files the first file is the employees controller class and you see all the controllers or web API controllers will basically inherit from API controller okay so the controller basically implements the rest API that clients use to perform CRUD operations on our list of employees okay and if you see uh, the employee controller class it has created an object for a demo app context this is the context class that we had created and this particular context class is added within our models folder so let me go to this demo app context class first and let me come back to this employees context in just a bit okay so if you see this demo app context class it is basically inheriting from db context class okay and then it basically adds employees okay so this is the namespace or rather it's the type okay it is within the namespace demo app dot models and this is the type okay so this is the db set okay that will be used to communicate to your database okay so as and when you add new models or rather new controllers uh, this particular line will get updated okay so right now we have uh, uh, controller only for employees okay so that's how only employees is there not available for more office right now okay so only this much the data or the app demo app context class will contain okay so let me go back to employee controller class and each controller class will basically have an object of the context class it will use this object to basically talk to your database okay so if you see since we scaffolded the code okay it has basically generated the method for read okay and another method for reading a particular employee and a method for updating an employee and a method for creating an employee and a method for deleting an employee okay so basically it has scaffolded your action methods rather than you manually going and generating we have used entity frameworks feature to basically scaffold the action methods okay and if you see all the different methods they basically use this context class to talk to your database so basically db dot employees which basically means this one okay so db dot employees okay so basically if you say db dot employees it is going to return the list of data from your database and in the same way everywhere you will use the data context class if you are interacting with the database so in a similar way what i will do is i will go and add a controller for my office class okay so i will right click on my controllers folder and say add and uh, add a new controller and i will select the same operation or the same selection and in the add controller dialog box i will select the model as office and I will use the same data context class and say add it is saying that there was an error running the selected code generator so let's try to rebuild the project so the rebuild is success so let me go and add a new controller called the office controller i will use the same options and in the model class it's going to be office and i will use the same data context class and the controller name is offices controller which is fine and then i will select add so basically it will scaffold the code for my office controller and my office controller will have all the crud operations for performing on my office model if you see here the office controller is created and in the same way we have uh, all the different methods and these methods use the data context class or the db context class to talk to our data so that's it for scaffolding controllers and actions thank you tutorialspoint.com simply easy learning